Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today, we'll be talking about volunteers, internships, and national service. Senator Harris Wofford has served as Associate Director of the Peace Corps and President of Bryn Mawr College. Senator Wofford's book of Kennedys and Kings discusses his work in the Civil Rights Movement and the creation of the Peace Corps. Reverend Elijah Morris is the Internship Coordinator at Cheney University of Pennsylvania. Reverend Morris is the Youth Council Advisor for the NAACP in Philadelphia and Regional Advisor for seven states for the NAACP's College Division. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Steve. Glad to be Good here. Good to be here. Well, thank you both for coming. Um, Senator, if we could start with you, if you don't mind. Um, can you talk a little bit about the vision of what uh, national service would be when, when you helped form the Peace Corps and, and create the Peace Corps with President Kennedy? Uh, President Kennedy stated very vividly just before I went to Africa to be the Peace Corps man in Africa living in Ethiopia, coming back from sending 600 Peace Corps volunteers off the White House lawn. Uh, this is now the second year of the Peace Corps. Um, he, uh, 300 of them were going to Ethiopia where I was going to be the director and uh, uh, another 300 had trained at Howard University where I went to law school. And coming back in, the last time I was his special assistant for civil rights, he said, you know this Peace Corps will be really serious when it's 100,000 Peace Corps volunteers a year. Then in one decade, there'll be a million Americans with firsthand experience in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Um, and, and for the first time, we will have a large constituency for a good foreign policy. Now, the Peace Corps celebrated its 50th anniversary this year, in se last September, a year ago. And, and um, 5,000 of them came to Washington. And it was full of pride that we participated in the March of the Flags from Arlington Cemetery and Kennedy's grave uh, to the Lincoln Memorial. 139 flags flying um, with the volunteers who had served there. Um, behind them. 200,000 altogether uh, had done important work. Um, the vision of Kennedy was by now, by 50 years, it would be several million. And uh, it's painful to think of what contribution to a good foreign policy three million former Peace Corps volunteers might have made. That's on the international service side. Uh, Kennedy really didn't uh, start the uh, National Peace Corps at home. He, his sister, Eunice Shriver, mm. kept saying to Sarge, Sergeant Shriver, who was head of the Peace Corps, you've got to do it in America, or Peace Corps for America too. And he said, I've got the world, that's big enough. <laughs> Go to your brother, the president, and tell him that he ought to get somebody. She did, he talked to Robert Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy was the first to run with the idea mm. of large scale national service. He got it through a Senate committee. Shriver was appointed to run the war on poverty and decided that a national service program that became VISTA, which was Robert Kennedy's idea, uh, should also be on the size of the CCC, which was, began with 300,000 young men. And he, ma he imagined a half a million volunteers in service to America as the ground troops of a war on poverty. Those are uh, lost opportunities because the Vietnam War sucked the resources away and the Peace Corps went from when Shriver and I left it, 16,000 a year, and next was to be 25. It went back to 5,000 by the time Nixon had finished. Um, and uh, VISTA has never had more than 10,000 a year. Uh, now AmeriCorps has now reached 80,000 a year, but we're far short of large scale truly large scale national service. Well, how would we deal with national service at a university? For instance, at your university, Reverend, how, how does that work? I'm, I'm listening because we do community service. And uh, we just did a big uh, community service event, actually two of them, one in Philadelphia at Mount Moriah um, uh, Historic Cemetery, and one in Coatesville at the um, uh, a shelter there. And 
it's volunteer. We, we actually asked, I say it that way nicely, but we kind of told our freshman students, you are privileged to be a student in this university because everybody that you know your age is not college material and everyone who wanted to come, economic reasons and others, could not come and therefore you cannot go through college four years and just leave and go out and start making money. You have to begin to give back now. So as, as I'm sitting here listening to, to the senator go, go back into the history of it, it, it just seems like the colleges and universities could pick it back up again and, and maybe there's still Maybe it's part VISTA, but I also know that we do um, learning abroad. And that could be a part of it, as opposed to just going to another country to study for a semester. You go to another country to study and do volunteer uh, service. That, that again, um, it, it helps the local university, uh, like Cheney University of Pennsylvania, and it also helps the United States of America uh, show good, goodwill to another country. Well, we'd like to team up on this, I think, because, <laughs> I, because I think the colleges and universities, including community colleges, should be major carriers if you have a truly large-scale national service. And what Clinton did was to call for truly national, in which a year of service before college, during college, or after college to pay for your college loans would be available to rich and poor. And he, he mm -hmm. assumed that there'd be a $10,000 education award at the end of a year's service. Uh, he wanted it to be uh, enough support from Congress for every young person who wanted to do it to do it. And I think if that had gone through, colleges and universities would have risen to the occasion to run programs of effective service in the communities they know well and I think the future of national service depends in part on higher education, right. picking up the ball and running with it. And just imagine had we, if we were able to do that now, the kinds of Americans we would be producing in our colleges and universities across this country. Not just educated, but committed to giving back, to doing for someone other than yourself. It would just expand um, each one reach one, as we say in, in, in the local churches and community, you always have to reach back and, and, and grab hold of some young person and try and help them as someone helped you. And if somebody didn't help you, you still reach back and help someone. It, we, our colleges and universities would be awesome if we had the funds to do that. Uh, not only would you get an uh, education, but you would also be doing service and it would just make for a much better America. Well, Reverend, you mentioned uh, reaching back, and, and Senator, you talked about rich and poor, but the criticism, if I understand it, uh, is that basically rich kids uh, go to the Peace Corps, and the criticism is that there's something funny about the government paying for people to volunteer. H how would you respond to people, perhaps, who, who would say that? Well, for one thing, if you're talking about full-time service for half a year or a year, and I favor basically for a year, mm -hmm. Uh, unless you're saints or wealthy, there has to be a living expense. The right. volunteer army is full of volunteers, but they get fairly well paid. Um, and I think if you tr make a difference between uh, occasional volunteering or Martin Luther King Day of, Service. of course, mm -hmm. unpaid volunteering, which you've been in we the part that. of Philadelphia is the leading city of, uh, they're, they're approaching 100,000 registered uh, people, young and old, rich and poor, uh, doing a day of unpaid service. Right. And by the way, uh, uh, Mitt Romney's father, George Romney, was Mr. Volunteer in this country. He, after being defeated for pre his presidential effort in 68, he spent the rest of his life organizing volunteer action centers. Uh, it turned into the Points of Light movement. But he came to Washington just before he died and met with me just as I had been appointed the CEO of the Corporation for National Service. And he said, we need the twin engines of unpaid, traditional, part-time volunteering mm -hmm. teamed up with the other engine of full-time power, which is what VISTA and more, more than, mm -hmm. usually more than half of AmeriCorps members are 
full-time. And I think if you think of full-time, you realize there has to be some pay. And if you think of the unemployment problem now, the jobs problem, especially for young people, especially for young people that are not yet college-bound, if they had a year of paid work in the service world on, on hard problems, ideally, from my point of view, run by colleges mm -hmm. and universities, mm -hmm. They would be far readier for college and for jobs, and it would be at least the way the CCC was for a time being. You had a job that it's at a critical moment when, for young people, large scale paid work in service uh, could be a part, just just a part of, of a really strong effort to see that people are able to work and live on what they earn. Steve, I, I just have to agree. I just have to agree. I, you know, there are a couple of programs. To. No, I do, Senator, I do. There are a couple <laughs> of programs going on now. Um, the Timberland Corporation uh, uh, has, has one program uh, that, that's national. We have a number of our young people from Cheney University uh, who are a part of it uh, now. And, and you see them all over the country with those red jackets on. They go into schools. City, um, city year. City year, thank you. City right. year. They go into schools Miracle and they vol year, volunteer um, to work in, in communities with young people. And they get a stipend to you be used for whatever, but part of it is used for their living expenses. But when they uh, come out, they also, some of that stipend has been put aside for them so that they have a few dollars that they can either further their education um, or, or start working somewhere. Or pay off their loans. Or pay off loans um, because just about everybody has to get loans to, to do, go to college. So, so these programs are, are there, and, and I agree with the senator. If they were run through the universities, imagine what we could do with those young people who are kind of out there, not, don't know what they want to do. They weren't very good in high school, and, and you know, that's, a, that's another three-hour conversation why uh, they, they, they're not prepared in high school when they come to us. But, but we could then have some resources to help shape and mold them and, and again, put them to work for their country. And one of, Steve, one of the problems that, that you painfully know, I'm sure, uh, is that um, many young people uh, start college and they weren't ready for it. Right. It was a new world. This, this applies to veterans, too, coming and back world. in the GI Bill. Uh, a majority of veterans don't use the benefits of the GI Bill, and, and plenty of them could if they had a year of transition where they did some service work, where they were really needed, uh, they could get ready to college. And if it was done under the auspices of colleges That'd and universities, awesome. they could make a year of service or a half a year or, or an academic year of service even giving some credit to mm -hmm. it, they could make it a pathway um, right to, to higher education. Well, you mentioned credits. Um, Cheney, I, do you, does Cheney give credit for community service or internships? For internships, we give academic credit. There are some companies that I recruit that also give a small stipend, which we are also always grateful for because uh, probably 95% of our students are on some type of financial aid. So getting to an internship is a problem for most of my students. And I work with the companies, and then we work with students. I, you know, I have to admit, some of these students will look out for another student. You don't have an internship, uh, but you do. You happen to have a car, and you don't, maybe you're not getting paid in your internship, but your mom sends you a few dollars, your dad sends you a few dollars. So you give another student a few dollars for gas, who take you to your internship in Philadelphia or pick you up from the highway because um, late at night all the buses are, are running late and you might not get one that comes directly to campus for a few hours. So our students help one another like that. It would be great, Steve um, and Senator, if we could, could offer some type of stipend to every student who receives an internship. Unfortunately, companies aren't quite there yet, and of course, Cheney doesn't have the, the endowment to, to do that kind of thing, and if we did, we most certainly would. Um, but uh, having, giving academic credit for the internship is the greatest thing that can happen to a student. And I tell my students this all the time, um, because companies 
are not looking for just the degree any longer. They want experience. Volunteer, internship, and, and national service, that's experience that can walk you into a job and, and put you three and four steps ahead of someone else. Mid, mid 60s, Michigan State University started a five year Peace Corps BA in which you found out in your first two years what country you would go to, you knew what language you needed to l learn, you'd go for your two years Peace, Peace Corps years, you'd get credit at Michigan State University for what you did and what you th wrote about in terms of what you did. Mm. And, and you'd come home with that much richer experience for one more year, bring it, uh, bringing the experience home to America. It thrived for a while. And then more and more, the, if, when I was head of the Peace Corps in Africa, <coughs> the 90% uh, were in te secondary teaching right. all over Africa. But the countries, as they got their own teachers uh, more and more ready to teach, they, uh, Ethiopia, et cetera, they wanted college graduates, not two-year college students. Right. Uh, so the, the, uh, so the, the program withered because of the, the other countries for, for education wanted uh, people with BAs, which is part of the problem you raised about, is it rich kids? Well, it isn't rich, but it is a primarily uh, a college graduate, rich and poor, you raised, that are in the Peace Corps. Fair point. Senator, you raised the issue of returned Peace Corps volunteers. Uh, in your experience, what are returned Peace Corps volunteers doing? Are they involved in service when they come back to the United States, in your experience? Well, there's a, there's a report that Civic Enterprises did for uh, the return, along with the National Peace Corps Association, that came out about a year ago. I'll make sure you have it and can uh, call readers' attention to it, uh, which was a major survey that was done of the of the 200 th uh, representative sample of the 200,000 on what they, uh, including very importantly, what they've done and what the peace, how the Peace Corps affected them. Uh, there, they, if you go to uh, the uh, to Delhi, uh, New Delhi, India, which I did with John Lewis on the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King going uh, to India, a uh, trip I had helped stir up with King and and get funding for way back in the late 50s. <clears throat> and uh, there in New Delhi, they said the people in the uh, embassy and the, far, and the e economic aid program would like to meet with you. And there were uh, about 20 of them for breakfast at all levels of the foreign service. Uh, so a lot of people uh, are, are in international service of one kind or another. More of them are in domestic programs Paul Sangas became a U.S. senator uh, as a volunteer, and so, so did Chris Dodd, and, and uh, a, a dozen or so equal number of Republicans and Democrats of the returned volunteers um, who have been in Congress. Um, and they're in city government, they're in, uh, co in corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Timberland, you named, is a big supporter of, right. of the city, Peace Corps. Yeah but it gives credit in its employing people for people with experience, and they also pay for their employees to do volunteer work, and they're deeply involved, as you said, with city year. But, um, you know, I think the corporate world uh, is, is, is another place where uh, the, the training of people, uh, in Pennsylvania, Governor Casey had a study of the uh, youth problem in yes. Pennsylvania, and the head of uh, Bell Telephone said, we employ about 10,000 people a year uh, in order to get 2,000, about this, 2,000 workers um, still with us six months later or a year later. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could get seasoned people who had developed uh, an ethic of work. hard work, mm -hmm. teamwork, um, that is the kind of employee that we want. And uh, those 200,000 Peace Corps volunteers, they've a thousand books. They, they have one way or another on the 50th anniversary at the Library of Congress, they had a celebration of a thousand books that they, uh, primarily they and others have written about awesome. Uh, awesome. both their experience in the Peace Corps and then after they came home.
when we do community service at, um, at the university and, and the NAACP, because we all are volunteers with the NAACP, um, all of that comes back to the local communities, to the local high schools, uh, and on Cheney's piece to the campus. And we asked some of the young people um, to just, what did you think of what you did today? And they talked to the people at, at the uh, shelter and at the cemetery. And the things that they said, I believe we, we actually got a few uh, quotes from some of the young people. It, it shows, I'm just bringing forward to 2012 what the center is saying, it shows that when you instill volunteer work and, and internship, a giving back, a sense of giving back, it develops the work ethic that everyone says our young people don't have. They have it. We just have to, as, as teachers, uh, to educate means to draw out, bring out what's already in them and, and, and to, to celebrate it, make them see it so that they can really run with it. We have to educate them that they have that work ethic, that it's, it's necessary for their well-being. I mean, for every young person who uh, experiences something that they've never experienced before under the guise of either national service or the university setting or the NAACP, it makes them a better individual. And it, 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 it makes them less likely to want to do something in the negative side. You, you can take that argument and start it back in elementary school because, and, and a number of, Maryland was the first state to require, I think it was 50 hours of service in the community in order to graduate. But a number of states have run with it, but far more. And Bethlehem, Pennsylvania was the first that had a lawsuit against it by parents uh, uh, committed, uh, uh, parents oppose for compulsory volunteer service because Bethlehem required every student. And uh, if, you, if they have this kind of experience in high school awesome. or even yeah. earlier, uh, not full time, but for uh, so many hours. City or you were espousing started uh, young heroes for middle school yes. students to do 13 hours of Saturday service and they did it all over the country. It was a very successful program, started, initiated by the volunteer, Peace Corps volunteers, the, the, the city year volunteers, asking their classes, you know, you know what, what would you like to do? And they said, be a core like you. And they, wow. that's where the young heroes started in middle schools. But where is that line? Should we have 13 hours, 10 hours? I mean, who decides how many hours? Is well, it, it's very decentralized right now. The, the who is in terms of secondary edu education at school boards. Uh, the, the who is colleges and universities. And, and we actually have um, requirements. Um, at Cheney University, there's a program, um, uh, a retention program called University College, which I am a part of. And uh, it is required for freshmen and new students to do so many hours of, of uh, we can call it community service, yet it could also be attending uh, a program, attending a lecture, participating in a program like this to broaden your mind, but also to going out and doing some um, volunteer work in the community. So it's, 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 it, 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 it changes from university to university, but it's, it's necessary for everyone to do it. High schools in Philadelphia all do it. You have to have so many uh, hours of, of community service. The, the, a colleague of yours in Philadelphia, the Hispanic community, um, and I believe is also a, a, a ordained minister, he came to participate in why is it hard to get Hispanic young people uh, to join uh, the, the AmeriCorps or Peace Corps, other things. And it's partly because parents who fought, fought to survive uh, yeah. out of poverty, yeah. parents don't, they want their son or daughter to get a job. Make some and money. To, to say that now after all of this, they're going to be volunteers doesn't ring well. And he, he was urging that we diminish the degree that we talk about volunteers when we're talking about full-time service and that we uh, recognize that it's work. And it's in, in tr a true sense, the Peace Corps slogan that lived on in the beginning was 
the hardest job you've ever loved. <laughs> and that challenged people, but it was also a job. And I think that uh, people coming, working their way out of poverty, um, it may not be the right appeal to say that volunteering implies to a lot of people unpaid until right. they think about going into the military where it's a pretty good job except for dying and killing. Right. We've only got a minute or two <laughs> left. I, I'm not sure where to go with that. But, uh, We've been unfair to you. <laughs> no, you've been very fair. I, I very much appreciate what you've both had to say. We've got a few seconds left. Last tips that you would both leave for our uh, viewers today. I would say make sure that your young people get out and do some community service. Something other than what, what people normally call community service, like um, cleaning up alleyways and that kind of thing. Those things are necessary and, and needed, yet I think going into a school and helping some, some young people, going into a nursing home and, and putting on a program that you would put on your school for your classmates, for the elderly, the people who paved the way for all of us to be here, that's community service. I would say the, the next president of the United States, and I, I know who I hope will continue to be president, would look at the best thing that Roosevelt did, the two best things, Civilian Conservation Corps and the GI Bill, and, and look at, and I think the best thing Clinton did was launch the beginning of large-scale national service and calling for it to be big enough so that every young person would have the opportunity to help pay for college and work their way through college. Here, here. Thank you both. Thank you. If you would like additional information about Senator Wofford or Reverend Morris, please visit jfklibrary.org or cheney.edu. If you have comments or suggestions about higher education today, please send an email to our viewer mailbox at highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. Thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. Please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.